Most of our web pages and apps have images that we're going to display, and the user will often see the web page or the app before the image loads in, and that's because images are usually the largest resource that we're loading in. To overcome this, we often reach for a skeleton loader. The issue with skeleton loaders is that they don't have the aspect ratio of the image that we're about to load in, and they all look the same, no matter what image we're about to load in. So in this video, I'm gonna show you something that I think is a better solution than skeleton loaders, and it's called a thumb hash. So I have this demo here, and it's just a simple image gallery. And all of these images that we're about to load in are quite large. They range from about two megabytes to say 1.8 megabytes. So if we refresh this, and I have my network throttled here to show what it would look like on a 3G network, we can see that we get a sort of blurry preview of each image before it loads in. So I just stopped it there so you can see the blurry version of the image that we're using here. And this is the thumb hash. So you could imagine if the, you had a web page that has lots of images, this is going to provide a much nicer user experience than something like a skeleton loader or even a spinner, which is probably the worst option for this. So another thing that you could do on top of this, but I'm not going to show you this in this video, is you could add a little shimmer to this like you might get with a skeleton loader. And that would indicate to the user that you have an image that is going to be loaded in and they're not just going to see this blurry image. Okay, so let's dive into the code and I'll show you how I did this. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is how I'm uploading the images, but I'm going to assume that if you want to use a thumb hash, you already have your image uploading and all that sort of stuff in place but I'm using upload thing just because it is by far the easiest way to upload images with a great user experience, speed and security, all of that sort of stuff. We all know how difficult uploading media can be and upload thing just sorts it all out for you. So I have this router here and this really does nothing special. All it does is set the max file size and it sets the max count. So there's lots of different things you can do with this in upload thing so you can use middleware and all that sort of stuff. I'm not doing that because I don't need it to demo this. And so the next thing I have is this images route here. And inside of here, I have this post request. And this is just going to take the URL of an image. So the client on their browser is going to upload the image and then they're going to send that URL to here for us to process and store. And then I'm just gonna store this inside of a JSON file here and I'm just storing the image. And basically this is just an array of images that we can then serve back to the user. So we have this get request here. This is going to read the JSON file and it's just gonna serve the images back to the user. So obviously you wanna store your images or your image URLs in a database or whatever you're doing, but I just wanna demo thumbnail hashes. And so I did the simplest possible thing that I could think of to do this. Next we have the upload. So again, this is using the upload thing, upload drop zone. And it tells you on their website how to set this up. It literally took me two minutes to set upload thing up. So we have this drop zone here. And then I'm using that. Once we get an image on the drop zone, we're just going to call the handle submit image. Handle submit image is going to post it to our slash images URL. And then that's where we're going to do our processing. And you can see here that it's going to post our image URL. And then finally, once we're finished uploading, we're just going to redirect back to the index. Okay, so our starting ground here is super simple, and I'm hoping that you can then implement this into your application. So the first place that we wanna start is by generating our hash, and I'm going to be generating a base64 encoded version of our hash. And so I want to start here with our post request, and so this here is our image URL. So you can see that I've imported all from thumb hash, and I've imported sharp as well. So I'm going to use thumb hash obviously to generate the thumb hash. And this library here is the official library. If you come over to this website, which I'll link to in the description below, this explains all about thumb hash, it explains the alternatives, the benefits of thumb hash, and it can show you some examples of all the different versions of this. So you've got blur hash and potato webp, which do similar sorts of things, but thumb hash is apparently better. And then they've got details about how all of this works, how they do all these calculations. We don't need to worry about that. What we do need to worry about is the JavaScript packages. And actually, if you go to the readme, you can see here there's JavaScript one, a Rust package, a Swift package. I've used a Go package as well, and I used a Flutter package. So no matter what you're building, you're probably going to be able to find a package to do this for you. 
or you might be able to translate one of these into the language that you're using. Okay, so we have these two dependencies imported. The next thing that we want to do is we just want to load our image in because we need an array buffer of that image. So I'm gonna say const res is equal to await and we're going to fetch the image. Remember, this should be called image URL, but remember this is a URL. And then we're going to get the array buffer. Okay, let's call this image array buffer. The next thing we want to do is we want to load the array buffer into Sharp. So I want to say const image file is equal to await Sharp. And then we want to put in our image array buffer. And then we also want to resize it as well to 100 by 100. So the reason that we're resizing our image to 100 by 100 is because the image hash library is not going to accept it if it has a width or a height that is bigger than 100. So this is going to maintain the aspect ratio of your image, and then it's going to create a hash that also maintains that aspect ratio, which is one of the benefits of using this thumb hash technique. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to get the data to a buffer, and we also need to get the info, which contains our width and our height of our new image. So let's do that. So we're also ensuring alpha. So this just ensures that there is an alpha channel. I'm pretty sure this is required because the thumb hash uses the alpha channel. It explains it in the readme how it does it. Yeah, so you can see here that thumb hash encodes a higher resolution luminescence channel, a lower res resolution ch color channel, and an optional alpha channel. And then we're going to execute raw, which is going to force the output to be raw, an uncompressed, unsigned 8-bit integer of pixel data. And then we're going to call to buffer with resolve to object true, so we can get this object here. Now this object contains our data and it also contains info. So Cursor's done this for me, but we're going to then call thumbnail hash, RGBA to hash, and then we're going to pass in, you can have a look here, the first parameter is the width, the second parameter is the height, and then the RGBA, which is going to be our data here from Sharp. Okay, so we have the binary version of our thumbnail hash. Now, I want to convert this to base64, so I'm just going to call buffer.from, pass in our binary, and then call toString and base64. Now we have a base64 string for of our thumbnail hash. Now, what you do with this from here is up to you. So you could store this in a column in your database, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to store it on the image URL. So I don't have to have any other columns or anything. I can just pass an image URL to my client. I can decode that image URL and I can get all of the information I need to display that image properly. So let's pass that in here. So this image here is the image that comes straight from upload thing. Then I'm gonna put a query string on here and this is going to be thumbnail, let's call it thumb hash, is equal to, and then this is going to be our thumb hash to base64. So I'm also going to store my width and my height and that's just gonna make it a little bit easier to show this properly on the UI. So I'm gonna say width is equal to, and then we got the info width and I'm also going to store the height as well. Okay, so let's run this application and upload an image. So it has some images downloaded here. Let's upload that. So you can see here in our images URL that we posted the image that upload thing gave us, the image URL, sorry, the upload thing gave us. Okay, so we have our image uploaded. And if we throttle the network here, to 3G, refresh this. So you can see the image loading experience there isn't great. So let's disable the throttling and have a look in our data folder. And you can see here that we have this tiny little hash. Let's take that out. And then we also have our width and our height. So we can use these to get the aspect ratio of the image. So you can see just how small this hash is here and you can see why it's going to be so fast to load in. Okay, so now I'm here on the index page 
and we can use our URL to get the thumbnail hash and then we can display that in a div and give it a background image of that thumbnail hash before the image loads in. So I'm going to say const URL is equal to new URL. And this is going to be our image URL. So the reason that I'm doing this is because we stored our data as query strings. And then this is just going to make it easy to get this data back out of the image. So I'm going to say const uh, thumb. No, let's call this hash is equal to and then cursor is going to do this for me. So we got a hash out of our search params. We get our width and we got a height. Now we can get a placeholder image using that same thumb hash library. So you can see at the top here, I've just imported star from thumb hash, and then we can use this to get the thumb hash preview URL. So I'm going to say const placeholder, and this is going to be a URL is equal to thumb hash. And then we're going to call the thumb hash to data URL. And then because it's base64 encoded, we just need to decode the base64 as well. So now we have our placeholder URL. Let's actually replace our image URL here with that placeholder so we can see what it looks like. So you can see that we do have a blurry version of that image. Now there's lots of different ways that you could display this as your image is loading in, but I'm just going to do a really easy thing. And that is wrap this image in a div and then give that image a background URL. So I'm going to say div and close that div. Now I'm going to give this a class of image container. And of course I'm using tailwind, which is where this class is going to come from. Now I just want to give this some style properties as well. And Curse is going to do this for me. So you can see here, the important one is this background image is going to be a URL and then it's going to be our placeholder URL. Then of course, we're going to make the background the same width and height as the image. And we need to replace on this image, our width and our height. And then I'm going to give this a border radius of 10, just because it will look better with a little border radius. And that's the only reason why. And this looks a little bit weird. So I want to make it a bit bigger. And so I'm just going to times all of the widths and the heights by three. So this is going to make it a bit more blurry, uh, but that's, that's perfectly fine. And then of course we need to replace the placeholder image URL with the actual image URL in the image. And now we have a thumbnail hash that is better than a skeleton loader and all within just a few minutes of work. And we've dramatically improved the user experience of our web page. If you like this video, please make sure you leave a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section below if you're going to implement thumbnail hashes into your web application or your mobile application. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.